What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we head to Saudi Arabia for the next race in 2027. If you missed out on last episode where we started out the 2027 season in Bahrain, then you will have missed a fantastic debut for our own Theo Porsche and a great performance as well from Pierre Gasly. Theo finishing third and Pierre finishing in fourth. So 27 points to start off the season. Fantastic start from the boys. Puts us in second in the championship early doors. Red Bull so far up the road. It's, it's pretty scary at this point. But Big competitors falling by the wayside. Mercedes only picking up a point. Ferrari only picking up nil point. McLaren picking up two points. So, again, we've got to try and take advantage of this big gap while we've got it. And hopefully, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix can bring us more points. Whether or not we'll get podiums again, I'm not too sure on this one. Again, the car's top speed is still pretty reliable and still top-notch. We're third and second in terms of top speed and acceleration. The DRS effectiveness is going to improve, but it's on 19 at the minute. And our cornering speed in the medium and high speed is in the bottom quarter. So we need a good performance again from the boys. We need the boys to be immaculate again, like they were in Bahrain, if we're going to get anywhere near a podium finish. So with that being said, you might see next to me, in terms of my face, when I move my face to the middle here, the, the actual budget has gone down by about nine million pounds the reason for that is because i've got some facilities getting refurbished car park development all fine factories in temporary shutdown team hubs getting refurbished and operations we've got the weather center being refurbished the helipad boardroom have all been refurbished and tour center needs doing as well and we've got some car parts in development so we've got a new underfloor rear wing and suspension being designed the rear wing should be done in the next three weeks. So by the end of, or the beginning of April, I should say, I was going to say the end of March, but by the beginning of April, that rear wing should be ready to be designed and then put on the car. And that, as we mentioned before, will give us a big boost in terms of DRS effectiveness and put us right back up in terms of the speed overall of the car. The underfloor and suspension, We've not looked at the top speed like we normally would. We've really focused on the, the cornering speeds. So hopefully those boosts will help us. And it's the same on suspension as well. We've gone for a big low, bigger low speed boost. And we do get a bit of uh, top speed as well. So hopefully with these improvements, we'll start to see a bump up in performance in the car. But with the car in its current form, the boys have shown in Bahrain, it can get some decent points. So let's see what we do in Saudi Arabia when we head to qualifying. So, folks, we've got our qualifying done, and unfortunately, it has been a bit of a miserable result so far in terms of our qualifying. Gasly will be starting pretty much from the back, and Fio not much further up the road. Not far off in terms of times for the, you know, top 10 positions, and when we look at uh, Fio's quickest laps and, and what the top 10 can do. Again, we had this last year where we had a really good first race result, and this year, we're hoping that we can sort of get some good results in the tracks that are coming. But it might be a struggle in Saudi Arabia. So let's see what we can do early doors and see if we can get some early positions and start chipping away. And maybe get some luck with a safety car or something like that. So here we go then, folks. It will be the start of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. You can see Williams are doing pretty well. Haas are up there. And we're floating away in the background and hoping the boys can put in a mega performance to get us some points today. But it's a big jumble up of the order now. You can see we're into 2027. The amount of drivers where you're expecting them to be is not necessarily the picture that you would expect. But Porsche is hanging on to this 13 for now. And he's fighting that Mercedes, Albon, with all he's got. And Gasly is still in 17th. So early, early doors, we've stayed out of trouble and we haven't caused any crashes. So no damage to cars just yet. It's surprising we are where we are, although Gazzy's just got an overtake on Ocon to make us feel a little bit better about letting him go. Um, but it's surprising that Gazzy is as low as he is because in the third practice, he was top of the leaderboard in terms of times. He was absolutely smashing it in practice and then in qualifying just couldn't put the lap together. So it is what it is. We just keep pushing, see what we can do. Porsche continuing on the end of this first lap to push this Alpha Tauri up the road and hopefully we can make an overtake in the next couple of laps on these guys ahead because again if we can get ourselves in the top 10 we'll certainly be in a fight for some points so let's keep pushing and see how we do 
So a lap or two down the line, DRS has been activated and, and is now open. And we've managed to get Gasly in front of Hauger. He's still chasing the other McLaren down. And yeah, we're, he's doing quite well. He's moved up into, into, into 16th. He's battling for 16th and 15th at the minute. But it's not quite... Um, it's Well, as you can see, that back 10 are all quite close together. Porsche is half a second back on Drugovic, and we're hoping he can pick up some pace sooner rather than later and get onto the back of that Williams as he's just got in front of De Vries as well. So, again, the boy's doing really well as we head into lap four. Now side by side is Porsche with Russell, and he moves up into 11th. So good overtake there, heading into the final straight. And you might be able to get onto the back of this Aston Martin as well as Russell is challenge getting challenged by Albon now. But not to be on that one. But Porsche showing good early pace and making up a couple of spots. Gazi still lingering down in 16th. Despite having the setup at 100% as well. I, I don't quite understand why Gazi's struggling as much as he is. But maybe it's just not a track for him. And there's a couple of cars that have gone off. And Gazi's just overtook De Vries. Let's have a look at the crash. So that'll be Hauger and Lando touching. Oh, that's not a great crash. It won't be a safety car, but Lando again having a bit of a nightmare and goes down to the bottom of the pack. But no safety car just yet. But Porsche continues to fight with the guys above and he's doing a great job. As Porsche goes down the inside of the Aston Martin trying to get in front of Stroll to get into the points positions and he has done so. And Gasly making some overtakes himself now. He gets in front of George Russell as well. Again, a battle we saw quite a few times last season. In slightly higher positions, I have to say, but Ferrari not having a great start to the year, and George will be kicking himself in frustration at these overtakes being made. I mean, his teammate Perez is in sixth, so Perez not having a bad race at all. Porsche is up into ninth and is chasing down Drogovic, who is in eighth at the moment. So, again, trying to make up this pace early and doing a good job of making up positions. Let's keep pushing and see what we can do. Porsche over the past few laps has been in a battle with Drugovic and he's continuing to push on these soft tyres. We're just extending the stint a little bit because we've got a little bit more life in them. But I think we're going to bring him in in the next lap or two. So we are just continuing to push these tyres as far as possible. Trying to be a little bit more aggressive and trying to give him as good a chance opportunity as possible to get up the road here, Fio. Um... So, yeah, he's going to be coming in in this next lap. And we'll see how he does with the pit stop as well. But you can see we are fighting in points for winning positions as he holds up the pack a little bit. And Gasly is going to be coming around the corner and passing his teammate. And we are going to be a little bit further back on everybody. But that's a pretty clean pit stop from the guys. Again, it's not super quick, but it is. it didn't have any mistakes on. So I cannot complain at this moment in time as Fio now pushes on and tries to pick up with the pack again on this next stint. So both guys have had their pit stops now and we're into lap 18. So now we're just trying to cut the time down to the guys in front. And it's about five seconds or so. So let's see how quickly we can get onto the back of these guys again and get in front of Hauger, although they've just pitted. So maybe the pit stops are coming in the next lap or two. So as you can see, pit stops have started to happen and we've got in front of a few of the pack we were chasing. And we're still on relatively fresh mediums. We're trying to do, obviously, a bit of a longer medium stint here to get to about lap 36 um, on those mediums so we can go back on to new softs for the end. And, yeah, we're doing pretty well. Gasly's now in front of Porsche, and the, the guys are continuing to not necessarily fight each other, but pull each other up the road is how I would describe it, with using DRS and the windows being close to each other. And, yeah, we are, we're doing a pretty good job, and we've just got to keep pushing, and hopefully we can get us both drivers back into the top 10 sooner rather than later. Oh, and one of us has gone off. Porsche is locked up. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> we were doing so well. And he's dropped down to 19th now because of that mistake. And he couldn't join. He was just a split second too slow at getting the car back up and running. And he drops down to 19th. Oh, Theo. Your first big mistake. And we lose seven positions. So it's over to you, Pierre. What can you do to save this race? So we're up into lap 28. You can see Gasly now right onto the back of this, this top eight pack that's formed. 
A lot of them needing to pit still. So, again, there's going to be some free positions to get here. And if we can maybe nab in front of this Mercedes and Ferrari block that's in front of us, then we might be in for some good points come the end of the race. Again, Fio still continuing to chip away at the guys in front. Whether he's going to be anywhere near the points by the end of it, I really don't know. But it's an unfortunate mistake from the rookie. He'll learn from it. He's still got... <clears throat> he's still got 10 laps to go until... Obviously, the race finishes, so there's still time for something to change in this race. But, again, Gasly is the one. He's the leader of this team. He's the experienced pro here. We need him to pick up the pace and get up into these positions. So, 29 laps down, and we move into the top seven with that overtake. And he gets up into the top six with that as well. And Drugovic and De Vries are pitting as well as Albon. So, we are going to be getting some positions here. Again, the Red Bull's so far up the road. We might be able to catch up with signs and get into third, so it's all looking good at the minute. So the gap hasn't really closed down to us and signs really, but he is continuing to chip away at it as much as he can, Gasly. Um, Tire-wise, we are pretty similar to what signs has got. We're a little bit lower than Perez and Giovinazzi, who are chasing us down. But again, we've got a decent enough gap to them. Um, it's just going to be a case of when we pit onto these softs, are we going to be quick enough to get back through the pack that are chasing us down? I think so with what the pace that we're showing at the minute. I think Gasly's showed some, like, much like he did last season when he had a bad qualifying, it took him a few laps to warm up in a race and then he'd go. So hopefully it's a case that we can continue to just pick away at this. Um, but we are at the moment in a fight for, for a podium, um, whether it actually sticks. I'd certainly take a top six or seven finish, though, from where Gasly started. So we've got about 15 laps to go, and the gap was down to about a second and a half there, but it's just jumped up by a couple of tens. I don't know if Sainz is maybe putting his foot down here to try and uh, open the gap up a bit more, but we were starting to see that gap come down. Um, again, continuing to push a little bit on Gasly's tyres here to try and see if we can open up the gap to the... Because you can just see on the, on the radar there, the gap between Gasly and Porsche is still so tight on that bottom pack that we need to try and give Gazi as much time as possible on those softs to try and come back through so hopefully though with a fresh pair of softs and everyone being on quite used tyres we should still be okay but again it's no guarantee and we're up to lap 39 now when we're in touch and distance of signs half a second is the gap Again, be interesting to see what happens here because Sainz isn't far off us in terms of usage. He's on 53%. I think we're both going to have to pit. Well, we are going to have to pit before the end of the race. We know that. But again, I think we bring I think we bring Gazi in now, try and give him as much opportunity as possible to come back through the pack. I think with the pace we've got, we should at least get points. Whether we get anywhere near podiums, that's that's a whole other ball game, I think. And you can see Gazi just tumbling down the order now. Fairly clean pit stop. Comes out in 17th, so stays ahead of Russell, which will help. So let's see what Gazi can do with this last in as Porsche gets in front of Hauger as well. So 10 laps now for Gazi to try and pick his way through the, this pack. The pace is in the car. We know this in a straight line speed. It's just whether or not you can make the most of it now. Let's go, Pierre. Let's go. And we start the overtakes early. We get up into 16th. And we go down the straight looking to make some overtakes here. Going in front of the Williams. Bit of a dive bomb there from Gasly. And he gets in front of Drugovic. Nicely done. That's two positions early on. And hopefully we can get in front of De Vries here. We need to get past De Vries as soon as possible. And we do. We go around that long corner. And we get in front of him. So up to 14th very early on in the process. Let's keep pushing. And we get in front of Schumacher. And now this is the big gap that we need to be concerned about. Because it's three seconds up the road now. Although that time is absolutely being carved at the minute by Gasly. And he continues to push on to his former teammate Ocon. And we get to the DRS straight at the end of lap 43. On the back of Ocon. I don't know if we'll make an overtake yet. But it's positive signs so far. We've got seven laps to try and get as many positions as possible. But so far so good. Gasly continuing to look for a way. We get back onto the DRS straight. Heading into lap 44. Can he make the overtake yet? He's certainly going to try. Goes down the inside. And we move up into 12. 
Albon next up. Gasly goes down the inside of Albon and he's got the Ferrari next up. If he can, he's got to hold on to this position first, though. Oh, and Albon gets it back. Although Gasly comes back now. Let's use a bit of deploy. Let's try and help him out. And he moves up into 45th. Well, 45th. He moves up into lap 45. He moves up into 11th. And now he's trying to get Perez now as well. Fantastic last in here from Gasly. Gets up into 10th position and holds it. And now it's Norris next. Sainz is uh, on 40%. He's going to the end here. That's pretty impressive driving from Sainz to make those tyres last and keep that position. And we get up in front of Norris. And now it's Sonoda up the road. So this is where the real fun begins, folks. We've got three laps left. We've got four or five positions we can make up if, if Gasly's on it and can get those overtakes done sooner rather than later. And we go into that DRS straight. Look how bunched up this pack is. This is how competitive it is in the mid-pack. And we don't make it then. But there's still plenty of time. We've still got a couple of laps to try and make some overtakes, get some moves done. And we look down the inside here as an order. And we get up into eighth. Next is Stroll. And we go down the inside of Stroll as well. And... Oh, we don't hold on to it, though. We've got to be careful that we don't go too aggressive. Because again, one slip up here and it's all over. But we get in front of Stroll there. And now we're on to Giovinazzi. Into the DRS straight we go. Can we make an overtake yet? No, we're a bit far back, aren't we? We're a bit far back. We're going to have one more lap after this one to get ourselves in back into the top five. I'd say, I said before, when we had to pit again, I would take a top six. And we're one position off it. Phenomenal pace from Gasly. Let's see if we can get him. Final lap has started by Leclerc. Eight seconds ahead of his teammate. And it's looking like, the, like it's going to be back-to-back -back race wins. And we get in front of Giovinazzi. We're going to have one more lap here to try and push. We're going to go full attack, full ERS, full everything. We can certainly get Joe. I don't know if we'll get Sergeant, But we're going to push. A few more laps we might have been able to get to signs. One more overtake would be lovely. We get up into fifth. Can we hold it? Yes, we can. And now it's Sergeant up the road on hard tyres. If it's going to happen, it's going to have to happen now. Is today's winner. And we go around the outside on the final corner. And we get back up into fourth. We were 17, 10 laps ago. And we finish in fourth. What a fantastic, fantastic race that was from Gazi. Back to back, top four finishes. Fantastic result for the team, and we continue to push on. Fantastic result. And there we go, folks. Pierre, despite starting 13 positions lower, finishes the top four and gets another 13 points on the board. Charles goes to 52 points overall for his team and has a nice 15 point lead over his teammate. Pierre now in the top three. Constructors-wise, we stay in second, and we have a 16-point gap over Alpine. But you can see the, the mid-pack is so tight that any big results for any team will be a big swing for anybody. Pit stop-wise, nowhere near in terms of our pit stop times just yet, but we are improving. We are getting there. 3.4, not far off the top 10. So, again, there's still performance to be found in the pit stops, but we'll keep chipping away at it, and we get another 3 million in the pot there. So, we head to Melbourne for the next race in Australia, and that will be round three in 11 days' time. So, I'm going to go get ready for that one, and I'll see you in Melbourne. So, we head into Australia with a little bit of concern because the wind tunnel itself has taken a bit of damage and is currently on shutdown. So, we've had to extend essentially all design projects for another seven days, which isn't great because that means... The rear wing that we desperately need and want for the DRS improvement isn't going to be coming anytime soon. And the underflow and suspension to help with the cornering isn't coming anytime soon either. So, yeah, it's a very frustrating moment for the team. But again, it's worthwhile because if it worsened, then there'd be longer delays. So we had to take that bullet, unfortunately. But let's get into the Aussie Grand Prix and see where we start in qualifying. So we had a better qualifying performance this time round, which is hopefully a good sign of things to come. 
In terms of our quickest lap times, we're up there with um, some of the quicker lap times of everyone else around us. So, yeah, a 17.2 probably puts us about fourth. So, round about where we've been, really, in terms of pace of the car. But Pierre will start in 10th and Fio will start in 12th. So, let's have a good start and hopefully pick up another good batch of points in Australia. So here we go then, starting a little bit further up the field than when we did in Saudi Arabia, and it's going to be 10th and 12th. Again, the McLarens having a good qualifying. Mercedes very much back in the chasing pack now. So let's see how these opening moments in the race go with Fio and Gasly pretty close together, and there's been some sort of collision there. I don't know what happened, but someone got held up somewhere along the line. Thankfully, neither of our drivers were involved. And Fio gains a position out of it, so we can't exactly complain. But Gasly sitting in 10th at the minute and is trying to push on in terms of the chasing pack to those two Red Bulls up front. So the positions have remained pretty much the same now that DRS has, has been activated after the first few laps being completed. And Fio's got in front of Porsche, uh, Fio's got in front of Gasly. I was about to say Fio's got in front of Porsche, which would be correct. But Porsche is in front of Gazi now, and they're sort of pulling each other along. And again, you can see the top 10 very closely packed together. No one really pulling away. The Red Bull's not massively in front of anybody. Of course, they're just about a second front of signs. But again, we're in a fantastic position, and we've just got to keep pushing. You come back to us in lap 7, and we're still trying to chase down the Williams and the Aston Martin in front of us of Giovinazzi and Stroll. No moves happening just yet. Gazi holding back Perez, really, for his teammate. Um, and it's been a bit of a frustrating start because we haven't really made any overtakes. So we are trying to get in front of Giovinazzi here, and we do. And we nick in front of him. Can we push on here to get in front of Stroll? That is the question. As a yellow flag gets raised, I don't know what for. Looking at times, De Vries is locked up. Yeah, De Vries tumbled down the order there with a lockup on turn six. So Fio now trying to get in front of Stroll and then try and push up into the top six and get in contact with Sonoda, hopefully. And there we go, then DRS open and P Porsche gets in front of Stroll and Gazi's got in front of Giovinazzi as well, so a double overtake there. Great work from the boys. And Gazi has now got in front of Stroll as well. You can see Porsche right on the tail of Sonoda now. And Gazi moves up to eighth and gets in front. So good early stint, first 10 laps or so. We're getting a little bit frustrated in the first eight laps, but now we're in a really good position. So, again, 11 laps down, and we're certainly in fighting fighting positions here as Porsche just makes that overtake on Sonoda. He's got four seconds up the road now to pick up to Albon and, and Norris. But, again, I wouldn't exactly back against the young rookie doing exactly that. So let's see what he can do and see if Gasly can get in front of Sonoda as well. So Gasly's just made an overtake on Sonoda there in lap 15. And again, Porsche sort of holding up the pack here for Gasly to make some moves. And maybe, just maybe, Gasly might get past his teammate here, I think. He's not doing it on that DRS straight. We might tell him to get out of the way, but I don't want to do it. Although, saying that, he might just get out of the way on his own. Um, the way Gasly's going at the minute, the pace he's showing is absolutely phenomenal at the minute. He's got maybe a lap or two left to try and cut down this time to the guys in, in the front pack. And let's see what he can do with that, because Porsche, unfortunately, he wasn't able to do it. But Gazi just might have the pace to do it. But just look how tight the back 10 is on this race. Like, if you look from Perez down, everybody until 18th is within a second of each other. There's been a crash as well, though. Let's have a look at this. So it's Mick and Piastri at the back. Piastri not really having a good time in that Aston Martin, is he? We've seen him crash a bunch of times into people this this season already, and we're only in the third third race. And Gazi now comes in for his pit stop, and Porsche will go up the road. We'll push him on this lap. And it's a bad pit stop from the boys. It's like five seconds or something. Yeah, it's 5.2. So that'll hurt Gasly. So he's gonna have to he's gonna have to have a good second stint here to try and get himself back up into that that chase and pack. So there's been a big crash. Both of our guys have been in pit stops now. Fios was a much cleaner pit stop. And again, it's going to be a big crash if, if it's happened in that chasing pack. And Joe's gone off wide. Clashing with one of the uh, one of the hasses. I'm assuming it's uh, Sergeant, but no safety car. So we're up into the early 20s in terms of laps. And Gasly has got in front of Schumacher. 
And he moves up into 15th and he should get in front of the other Alpha Tauri as well. And he has his cleared De Vries at the same time. So, again, Porsche starting to chase down into towards this top 10 pack. If he can get in front of Piastri pretty quickly, that would be a good thing for us as well. And he looks to go down the inside of Piastri here on this corner. And he should have the drive to get away. And he does. Great overtake there from Porsche. He's got a big eight-second gap to try and cut down now to Russell and co. But if he, the, the longer that stint goes on for those guys in front, the better. And Gasly's also got in front of Piastri. We're a few seconds back on Albon, but he's already pitted. So I say a few seconds. We're just behind Albon. Um... He's on very he's on brand new mediums. And again, we're only five seconds down the road from Russell as well. So there's positions coming here as we lap go around the last corner and we go up in front of Oh, we're just behind. <laughs> just behind Signs of Norris as well. So that's not a bad position for us to be in, considering there's if a lot of the top ten need to pit as well. So we're in a bit of a DRS train at the minute as we head into lap thirty. And Again, Gasly and Porsche are sort of trading positions using the DRS to keep themselves with this pack. Um, and yeah, we, we, are in a, we are in a good position here. We just need to stick with this pack, I think. And again, it's going to be similar to what it was in Saudi Arabia where we're going to put the guys on some soft tyres at the end and hopefully they can just go charging through. Um, but yeah, we are in a good position. We've just got to stay patient. Hopefully things go our way. We're certainly going to be in the points by the time the... Next round of pit stops happen, and yeah, we should be good to go, really. So there's been a bit of separation now between us and that pack we were chasing with because Hauger's lagging behind and, and holding everyone up on the 30% tyres. Um, so that that might just be what helps some of the guys in front keep in front. But Sonoda coming in, Hauger coming in now, so we move back up into the top 10. You've got Russell who needs to pit. You've got Giovinazzi, Stroll, and Drogovic as well to pit. And we should be at least within touching distance of them by the time we come in. They c come in for their stops, I should say. We're on to the back of Russell here in lap 34. Looking to go down the inside is Gasly. Is Porsche, sorry. And uh, he makes the overtake. And Gasly now looking to make the overtake at the same time. So double overtake there from the boys. Good to see. Five seconds, unfortunately, though, to the top seven. And hopefully we can get ourselves in touching distance of some of these pit stops that are going to happen in the near future. And then we'll have to see where we go from there. And just as we say it, the pit stops happen. So we move up into 6th and 7th. So we've just entered the pit window for Porsche. And again, we've been staying aggressive on the tyres, starting to preserve some of that fuel as well. And we're in a good spot with that. So we'll stop conserving that. So Norda's starting to gain up, position, gain up pace as well because he's on brand new soft tyres. Well, new soft tyres at this point. He's not brand new, but they are newer soft tyres. Um, but Fio is going to have brand new softs to put on for the last sort of 17 laps so a few more laps to go for Theo before he comes in for the pit stop and hopefully it's a case of we'll be able to make up some positions on the on the final stints for both guys really um but yeah happy to be in six and seventh I think I think with the way we qualified and the way the pace has looked in the car this weekend I think this is probably the most we could hope for if we could get back to these sort of positions or maybe eight for nine I'd probably take that um but again it just shows you that any sort of upgrades on your car in the midfield and it makes a big, big difference when you see how well McLaren are doing in comparison to the first two races and how well Mercedes are doing compared really to the past season. So Theo comes in for his pit stop now on lap 41. Will it be a nice clean one? Yes. Quickest pit stop we've probably had all season. That's a great pit stop from the boys and girls. And now we come out in 15th. So this is where the fun begins for Theo. He's going to have the brand new soft tyres. Can he make the most of them and start picking off the rest of this pack? Let's see. And there's been a yellow flag waved and it's because Hauger has locked up on turn 11. So Theo gets a free position there and we will very much take that. So Theo's just got into within a second of Russell's time. He's going onto the DRS straight now. Can he make up a place or even get into a position for the next DRS straight to make an overtake? Let's find out. He's going around the outside, and he has made that stick. So, Fior moves up into 12th now. And and next is the Ministry of Defence of Mexico, Sergio Perez. And Fior putting in the fastest lap of the race so far. And he's showing great pace at the end of end of this race at the minute. Gaz is not really catching up to Russell, and he's sort of in no man's land. So, let's see if Fior can pick up some points for the team. And he's up to Sergio now. 
Goes down the straight with DRS and makes that pretty comfortably. And now he's got three seconds to make up on the two Williams drivers. And then there might be, if he can catch up to them in the next few laps, we might be able to make up some more positions and get ourselves in a fight for a top seven finish, which would be good, I think, considering we haven't really looked the quickest, but we haven't certainly haven't been the slowest. I think the two-stop obviously does hinder you a little bit, um, but it can help you in other ways. So let's see if we can make up some time here on these guys on their slightly more used softer tyres. And Theo now has caught up to that pack of three or four races of Ocon, the two Williams and Stroll. And he's going to be in a fight for points. Gasly's starting to chip away at the two Ferraris. It would be nice if we could get in front of at least one of them by the end of the race on Pierre's side of the garage. But again, Theo getting in front of Ocon early. And next up is the two Williams. Again, getting frustrated a little bit here. Porsche by Giovinazzi. Defending it quite well. He does need to stay patient though because the Williams cars are on 40%, 45%, 47 46 Signs is on 39%. I mean, we're not catching up to Signs anytime soon. Oh, and someone's gone off there. Giovinazzi locked up. Did he lock up? Did we touch? It looked based on the initial blink and you'll miss it footage. Yeah, he's gone off there of his own volition. Pressure from Porsche telling on Giovinazzi. And we continue to race. And Gasly gets in front of Perez. And is now chasing down Giovinazzi. And he's got Russell in front of him as well. So there might be some positions for Gasly to make up. I don't think Gasly will get points. But we're certainly looking to Theo here to get, get a good handful of them before the end of the race. With three laps to go. And there's a virtual safety car with three laps to go. Who has crashed though? That's the question. George. George and Giovinazzi. Oh, that's two free positions for Gasly. And that is not something you'd want to see. Russell is out of the race. And is that going to be it for the race, ladies and gentlemen? Are we going to lose? Are we going to lose a ability to pick up a load of points here because of that mistake? So the virtual safety car is ending. So we're going to go a full attack here to try and get in front of Stroll. Let's see if we can do it. We're going to have one last lap to go. Tyres are a bit cold, but we need to push to try and get as many points here. We've stated before when the mid-pack is as tight as it is at the minute, you need everything you can get in terms of points. We're on 45% tyres, so our tyres should be vastly stronger than theirs. 10% more, in fact. And he goes in down the inside of the Williams. He's getting blocked out by the Aston Martin, though. And, and Verstappen gets his revenge. Porsche manages to get in front of the Williams. He's not going to have the pace, though, to get into 7th. And we'll take an 8th and 11th from Australia. So there you go, then. Confirmation of the result. Max winning. Charles getting second and Albon finishing in third and picking up another podium for Mercedes. And we finish in eighth and pick up five points. So drivers-wise, the gap is 13 points between Charles and Max. You've got Carlos jumping a point in front of Pierre and Theo jumping up into the top five on equal points with Yuki. Constructors-wise, we stay second, but Mercedes have very much jumped that gap with a big haul of 25 points. And it's going to be a real fight for us, I think, to try and hold on to those positions. But again, if we can stick around with Alpine, they seem to be the clear contenders for the uh, the other positions as well as obviously McLaren. So our aim for the season, of course, if you remember from the end of season 2026 when we had that uh, review, we have to finish top four. That's our aim. So at the minute, we're more than smashing that. So we've just got to keep chipping away and see what we can do. And the positive thing is, is that we've got 25 days until the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, and if we look at the car development, the rear wing should be on. So we should have at least better rear wing performance and DRS performance and straight line speed on the DRS by the time we get to that point of the season. And then the following race after that, we should potentially have the underfloor and suspension done as well, but we'll have to wait and see on those. But again, I think it's been a pretty good start to the season for the first three races. I don't think we could have asked for much more. We've been on the podium. 
We've had two top four finishes from Gasly. And Fior has come through with, in the end there and got a couple of points for us in the Aussie Grand Prix. So I think with the car, if you'd given me that at the start of the season with the way the car's performance looked, I've, I certainly would have taken it. Um, but we obviously know there's a lot of work to do and we're only at the end of March. So let's keep pushing and see where we're, we're at by the time we get to Azerbaijan. And yeah, fingers crossed, we'll be in a good spot by the time we start that one and it'll be our first sprint race of the season as well. So... Yeah, I'll see you when we get to Baku. As always, folks, if you've enjoyed the episodes, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I know today's was a little bit different because we had two races in one episode. Um, but again, I'm trying to get through the season as quickly as possible so that we can you know, try and get through as far down the timeline as possible before we get to F1 Manager 24 when that comes out. Sometime in the summer, they've said we don't actually have a date yet, but sometime in the summer is the hope. So... Yeah, want to try and get through as much of it as possible. And when that comes out, we'll be ready for that as well. So yeah, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. 12 away at the time of recording from the big 1000. So any help on that would be appreciated. So yeah, I'll see you in Baku.